On this channel, we share a lot of very specific tactical strategies, methods. We're going to do something a little bit different in this video. I want to step back and think about each of us in this moment in our relationship to technology, specifically AI. This one is about the marketer, you, not the marketing. This is Andy from Urban Media, and I'm going to walk through right now the stages of AI proficiency. Let's jump in. First of all, we're all using AI. It's almost ubiquitous. We just finished a big survey. We've got a big research piece. By the way, all of the research that I show, I'm going to show three different research pieces here. They're going to be in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. 95% of marketers are using AI. The survey that we did this year, we collected 800 plus responses and you can see how people are using it. But my point now is that we are using it. It's everywhere. It's all the time. It's in every conversation almost. It is a ubiquitous tool. Now, Think about how we use it and where we are in our skill sets. And I want to suggest that there's really seven levels. The first is just the AI user. And you put in a prompt and you get a response and now you're using AI. In fact, anybody that uses Google is now using AI, at least currently in the US. The next level is when you start to really apply it and you learn the basics of prompt engineering. And the big unlock here is when you realize that AI can improve your prompts. And every prompt you ever wrote was in fact just a draft prompt. Give that prompt to AI, ask it to review the prompt or revise it. And then you got to test it, right? Because it's like software engineers have to test their code. Prompt engineers have to test their prompts. Might not be good. Usually it takes three or four iterations before you get something good. But now you have an excellent response. And in fact, you also have a reusable prompt that you can share with someone else on your team and level up the people around you. The next stage is when you take these reusable prompts and you realize just all the inputs they can take. If you train the AI with better inputs, and that could be all kinds of stuff, a report, a guide, a, a persona, a screenshot, you get much better outputs, a strategy, an outline, a better draft. You get the idea. What goes in determines what comes out. And the more you train it, the more targeted it is, the more focused on the outcome. That's a big step. After that, you suddenly realize that these reusable prompts with these high quality inputs aren't just isolated, they go together in the processes that we all use every day in our jobs. They're part of workflows, right? You have a job not because you have a task, but because you are in a process to get a specific outcome. That AI process developer is the next level. Now you realize, suddenly this is a big breakthrough, when you realize, why am I copying and pasting all these prompts one at a time? These can fit together in a series. These can be codified literally as code in an automation and you start building automations. Could be a Gemini Gem, could be a Claude project, could be a chat GPT, custom GPT, and the outputs are great. <laughs> it's amazing. Like I just built a tool. Now you own that tool. Now it's a, it's, it becomes part of your tool set and you can use it all the time over and over again to get ever better results. That can also be shared with people on your team. The next level past that is when these automations are built to go do more things. They can do stuff on the web. They are agents with agentic power. If you haven't used that word yet, get ready. You're going to be using that word a lot. They can go pull things from other sources automatically. They can go scrape pages. They can read LinkedIn profiles. They can write reports. They can send emails. They can do things on a schedule. This is when AI connects to APIs. This is when these tools all get integrated together. This will all get easier. Currently, it, it feels kind of technical, but the outputs are in fact fantastic. It's doing something by itself. It emails me this report every Monday morning. Past that, in the future, this is almost like a prophecy. We are each going to be overseeing the work of digital labor. It's not just people on our teams, it's AI agents on our teams. And these things can work together. These things can go into a process. You become a manager, a boss. You're an AI boss, <laughs> managing agents, looking at their outputs, checking for quality, looking for better inputs, connecting them together. And the work quality is very good. And uh, everything needs, of course, to be checked. We don't really trust AI. You have to look closely at what it's doing. But that becomes your job is to just sort of review the work that these things are doing. Sounds weird. It's coming. It's here, actually. The outputs, if you ever questioned that, and if you're worried about hallucinations and accuracy and bias and ethics and all those things, take a moment to at least appreciate the research that shows that a single individual using AI is outperforming teams of people without using AI. So 
Regardless of your emotions in this moment and your feelings or your concerns about this, it is simply here and it's something that we are using and it, it's something that is driving outcomes and it's just uh, part of the context of our, our digital world and our technical environment around us. Now, back to emotions because this is relevant. It's a, it's a massive disruption. I saw 59% of marketers are feeling overwhelmed. I am. Wow, this is a lot. Like I got to change everything. All my content's got to be updated. I got to learn all these new methods. I spend hundreds of hours a year doing research and experimentation and testing. But do you feel disrupted? If you're an AI user, you're probably freaking out a little bit. <laughs> these are the people that are the most concerned. Once you're a prompt engineer, okay, I get this. AI can help me. It's writing prompts for me. I'm saving them. I'm building a reusable prompt library. Okay, now I'm training it. I'm learning the inputs that it needs, the knowledge blocks, the, and then you're building it into a process. You're getting more comfortable with it. It's less of a, you, you feel a bit more empowered. Then you start vibe coding, call it whatever. You're building tools. You're building tools that you can reuse again and again. People on your team are getting smarter because you're sharing these tools with them. Until the point where the people who are building actual agents, the demand for this work is off the charts. I have friends who get paid huge amounts to, they're not at all concerned. They can't keep up with all the work they have because they're able to connect systems and, uh, and to drive outputs that executives and brands and decision makers love, right? These are big opportunities. And then finally, the, the AI boss, the boss of the agents, the person who oversees them. This is the person who is super secure in their future. In this moment, whether you feel like this time is a disruption or an opportunity depends completely on where you are on this learning curve. That's it. And guess what? Each of us are responsible for our own skill sets. Don't wait for someone to train you. It's not, it, it won't happen fast enough. It is on all of us to learn, to experiment, to test, to save, to share, to teach others. That's the moment. The research on this is pretty dramatic as well. Microsoft did a big study evaluating the firms that have fully embraced AI, kind of like AI first kind of companies, and they call them frontier firms. People that work at frontier firms are more than twice as likely to say their company's thriving. People who work at frontier firms are more than twice, almost three times as likely to say they can take on more work. Who says that? I can take on more work. Like that's how empowered they are. That's how efficient, that's how performant these professionals are. And they're also uh, far less likely almost half as likely to say that AI will take their job. They know their value. They see the future. They have embraced the change. So one more quick thought for you. This is really interesting, I think, to, to, to think about all of us is on this so-called transformational journey, also kind of an annoying term, but it is really, it can be transformational. And I think uh, for those of us who are investing in our skills, it, it does feel like an era of opportunity. Each process also has its own evolution. So if we take your standard operating procedures, look for prompts that make you more effective and that can get those results or even better results. It's not just about efficiency here. It's about performance. And then those prompts end up evolving into automations and those automations may eventually become agents. So one of the biggest questions for marketing leaders all over the internet, around the world, who needs what? Which team members would benefit from which tools, applications, prompts, methods. Take a moment to think about that. This is one of the great, the great moments digital. I'm kind of an old guy now. I've seen tons of changes, massive disruptions. Like I, I started doing stuff on the web in the 90s. It's not weird at all that there's another technology revolution and we have to be adaptive. If you don't like working in a dynamic industry, marketing's not a good category for you. Hey, hope this was helpful. It's just a point of view. We rarely make things that are just kind of like a perspective, a big perspective, but we hope it's helpful. Orbit Media is a digital agency that focuses on building and optimizing high-performing B2B lead gen websites. Uh, if you found this helpful and someone else would could, could get value from this, we'd be grateful if you shared it. Thanks.